Hello everyone, welcome into the Weston Peachtree Plaza back here in Atlanta, Georgia for another Buyers Auto Playoff Drive. That's the 40-year vet Tim May, that's Andy Backstrom. And he's not with us right now, but I do have confirmation, fellas. Mayan Williams is in Atlanta. So all of the speculation on if he was actually sick, is he better, is he gonna be better in time for the game? He is in Atlanta. He was on the practice field as we got to watch a few minutes of Buckeyes practice. Got to watch the third string throw the, throw the ball around a little bit. We got some some things to talk about there a little later in the show. But Tim, uh, let's start with you. Practice observations uh, as Ohio State is just another day closer to the Peach Bowl semifinal against Georgia here in Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, well, first thing you look for. I mean, Chip Trainum told me at the little session we had the uh, session with the whole team this morning. Where you could go around and interview anybody you wanted. That was the good news. The bad news was it didn't last long enough, in my opinion, because there's so many of those guys you don't see. Yeah. You know, and uh, when I was talking to Chip Trainum again, who's been rooming with Maya and, uh, and uh, expected him to be in practice today. He's had a stomach bug for the last two days. I think we covered that yesterday while everybody was speculating about this, that, and the other. And uh, he was back there today. You know, it was funny because I was watching him the whole time in the practice, and I'm, I'm not sure he looked 100%. No, but the main thing was he was out there and I posted a little video of him going through a little drill there, a little blitz pickup drill or whatever. Um, at Twitter, you can you can find that. But but the bottom line is, yeah, he's back. Uh, that's good news for Ohio State. It's about as close as you're going to get to 100% physically, offensively for this game, it looks like, uh, of the people who are expected to be on hand. Uh, Matt Jones still has a heavily wrapped. I think it's uh, – I get his ankles mixed up. I think it's his left ankle. I forget which one. That's right. Right ankle. There you go. Thank you very much. Uh, but I was talking with Enoch Bumahi. I'm going to write a little story about that later today. We talked about it, Andy, about it. this guy's ready to go in case, in case Matt can't go or can't go all the way, et cetera. So this team feels like it's in pretty good shape physically for this late in the year uh, for a game of this magnitude. Yeah, Enoch Bumahi ready to go. I think Josh Fryer would be ready to go yes. as well because you know, in that Michigan game, Matt Jones didn't play and Enoch got the start. But – Josh Fryer ended up playing 60 plus snaps. So, yeah. you know, it'd be interested to see if they did have to go to that option, uh, who would play. But Matt Jones did say today he feels great. You know, I think he's a, a tough guy. He's probably trying to fight through it. He did say that playing through the injury was frustrating because every week it was putting more and more stress on that right foot. Whereas now Another he's tweet. actually had four weeks to really hit the reset button and do the proper recovery. And he says that he feels significantly better yeah. having done that. So. You know, we'll see if he plays. He says he feels great. Uh, we'll see if his word checks out when yeah. the ball is kicked on Saturday. I spoke with Josh about it, too. They were sitting right next to each other, you know, at a table. We couldn't miss the two. And, uh, and then Justin Fry, you know, he's great. You know, that, wow, just think about that. You're going into a game of this magnitude and a little bit of doubt there yeah. about your front, your, your starting offensive line, but not really because these guys have all played now. Right. And I mean, it's one of the big focal points of this game is the line scrimmage and that Georgia front is we talked about all week. Yeah. I mean, Spencer, what do you what do you see presenting a challenge even if Matt Jones plays? I mean, it's got to be Jalen Carter because it doesn't Curry. matter it doesn't matter who's in there. I mean, off, NFL offensive linemen are going to have trouble at some point in his career blocking Jalen Carter. So you could put any guy in there, and it's going to be a challenge. And then you add on the fact that you don't really know who's going to be the guy blocking him, and there's a little bit of uncertainty there for Luke Whippler, for, you know, the tackles around uh, this guard, wherever, you know, whoever they play, however they decide to to insert a guy. But everything kind of becomes more clear if Matt Jones can play. And so you wrote about that today, Andy, and, and I think that, that Matt Jones, uh, as of right now, if I had to guess, I would say Matt Jones will play. But that's not based on, you know, reality maybe even because – they're always going to say, yeah, I feel great. I'm going to play. And there's always gamesmanship as we move forward here on the the playoff drive presented by Byers Auto. Yeah, but let there, me make this point about that. The, the injury he's got, he can go out there and he can start the first series. He can play five series in a row or he can the second play of the game. It can get tweaked and boom. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's what he's dealing with. I do believe it's in the realm of the high ankle sprain area. You know what I mean? Which, man, when that, when that thing gets tweaked, it hurts a lot. And uh, so that's – and the thing about it is, as we're just pointing out, they've got guys ready to go. Uh, and it's always going to, it's going to be a dogfight that air, or dog fight every play for those guys on Ohio State offensive front with this vaunted Georgia defensive front. And uh, like, you know, like you were talking about Jalen Carter 
a couple of weeks ago when we were doing one of these things. And, but Jalen Carter himself has been banged up for the last uh, several weeks of the season. So that's going to be just something curious to keep your eye on. Yeah, as we move forward here, like I said, on the on the Byers Auto Playoff Drive, uh, I use the word gamesmanship. I'm going to talk about gamesmanship a little bit. Kirby Smart used his yesterday. Uh, the media got to watch Georgia practice. What does Kirby Smart have in store for him? Five to ten minutes of calisthenics. They okay. supposed to be able to get away with that. So Ohio State turns around today. We get to go watch practice, do a little bit of individual drills. Don't see much of anything. And then they say, okay, team. And I started to salivate a little bit. I was like, oh, we're going to get to see some team. And it's a third team offense against the scout team defense. And uh, we got to watch Devin Brown uh, with an impressive deep ball to Keon Grays, moving around in the pocket a little yep. bit. He's really elusive, by the way. But yes, I know that this isn't a show to talk about the third string offensive offensive unit because that's probably a time for March, April, or maybe never. Let me see. You know, I, I, I talked to Devin Brown because you know we know the battle is coming in the spring. And uh, when I first talked to him, he basically gave me this. Uh, you know, not thinking about that right now. We're getting ready for Georgia. You know, this big game on Saturday night. Blah blah blah. And I said. Man, you recited that almost just like it was written for you. And he started laughing, you know, because, uh, yeah, of course it's the big game. But, but but you're right, Devin Brown's one of those guys who's made, I think, some impressions in in bowl practice, you know, yeah. along with Cal McCord. That's going to be starting uh, January the 10th, maybe, or the 11th. That's going to be the in most interesting thing we're going to be talking about from that moment on is that battle in the spring. But, of course, that's the middle of January. This is the end of December. And for right now, I just thought it was interesting that Ryan Day turned around and, and had a little gamesmanship of his own up his sleeve. You know, he kind of pulled that out of, you know, even, even he's all college football coaches are paranoid, I should say. Ryan Day's not privy or not immune to that. But also, usually don't see that much gamesmanship out of Ryan Day when we get those kind of open media practices. Uh, but today, it was uh, lock it down, lock it in, and once those guys leave, we'll be able to practice. I just thought it was an interesting little wrinkle, Tim, well, that they yeah, threw out the interesting there. thing was, you know, they found a camera that didn't belong or was sort of out of place. I can't remember if it was Monday or Tuesday. My, my, my good buddy, uh, Jeff Snook, uh, who's going to be actually coming up and hanging with me the next couple of days, wrote a little story about this on Facebook because I wasn't aware of it, but the camera had not, as they found out, had not, they found it before he took any photos or videos of Ohio State's practice. It was kind of in a camera area where some preset cameras were already set up for the telecast and stuff. And uh, so they took that, but I'm, I was told by my sources, you know, so to speak, that are pretty good, that they didn't capture any of an Ohio State practice, but it was set up to possibly do that. So that's added a little bit of intrigue to this game uh, heading forward, but with so many places to stick a, a GoPro or something, you know, in this place. I don't know how you find them all, but, but Ohio State is smart enough to sweep an area, to sweep these things, just to look for them because, you know, we all know about the NFL and the hidden cameras and things like that that you've heard about stories in the past. Maybe one of uh, Andy's favorite teams was accused of doing that at one point. I don't know his favorite team. He spent a lot of time in Boston, though. But, uh, but the bottom line is, it's all this little stuff, man, headed for the game. Andy, I, I I can't help but start to look at the demeanor of these two teams. And, you know, Georgia is the defending national champion. It's the most confident bunch I've ever been around as far as four years of coverage, you know, for lettermonroe.com. You've been around quite a few good teams, you know, in your travels. Tim's obviously been around here for 40 years. That's why we call him the 40 year vet. Um, but this Ohio State. I'd be good if I was a bourbon. This, this, this Ohio State team is as loose as I can remember an Ohio State team being. They just seem like they know they have nothing to lose. They know that a lot of people are doubting them. They know that that this is an opportunity to beat the defending national champions. And I think one thing that they don't maybe say, but an underlying theme of this is it's really hard to repeat in college football. And maybe even Ohio State knows like, yeah, Georgia, it's really hard to repeat in college football. And so I just think Ohio State is really starting to show that it is the loose team Ryan Day wants it to be. I think both teams are extremely confident right now and as they should be they're in this position for a reason yeah um i think for ohio state you've had a month since the michigan game and it was funny yesterday there was this part of the press conference in which it was tommy eichenberg and i think jack sawyer and yeah. then Leighton ransom they were all asked about the michigan game and the question was are you tired of talking about it at this point yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, okay, we're moving on from Michigan. And that's kind of the feeling right now. There's been enough time since that game 
the, it really is focused on Georgia right now. And I think like compared to last year, you lose to Michigan, then you, you end up in the Rose Bowl. And as all the players have said, there just wasn't simply as much on the line. They win the game, records are broken. There's this eye to the future. But then the whole off season was Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. At least with this situation, Michigan, the storyline only lasted two to three weeks. It's trickled in here in Atlanta, but it hasn't been the focus, nor should it be. And I think that makes it easier for the players yeah. to get more dialed in and not get so hung up on, yeah, we lost in embarrassing fashion. Before you start, Tim, but there is enough of it, Andy, to sprinkle it in enough yes. to piss off Ohio State. Definitely. So maybe it is the perfect amount. Yeah. You know, just enough to piss you off, but not enough but to see, wear the it's reason narrative. you're asking about it is not the rub mud in their face. And I would never try to rub mud in the face of like Paris Johnson Jr. He's a big guy. Yeah. Want to jump. I mean, but it's more of did you learn your lesson? You know what I mean? What did you do to address obvious problems in that game, yeah. both offensively and defensively, that you know, will help you going into this one. Because it's the first time you, you've seen Ohio State vulnerable to the point that it got beat, and this happened two years in a row. That's where people, even fans, are going, hey, you're the ones that keep bringing up me. No, what we're bringing up is what did you learn from that? And that, you know, there's a, you know, but how else do you ask it except, you know, with these breakdowns in coverage that cost them dearly when it was just a person versus a person, and they got beat three times for three touchdowns, that's huge in a game of that magnitude. That's all your, you know, how is uh, Jim Knowles addressed, the defensive coordinator addressed maybe some guys who were put in awkward positions. You don't put them in those positions anymore, in, you know, in your whatever your grand plan is and stuff. And that's, you know, that's kind of what I was getting to. You know, and you're speaking about, uh, remember when Ohio State played Alabama 2014, uh, first college football playoff. Ohio State comes to town, they're fired up, they're geared up, nobody's really giving them much of a chance against Alabama. I remember Alabama flies in, and I remember distinctly talking to Mari Cooper in the in the uh, little setup they had for their, us there at the airport to just do these, you know, welcome interviews. And he seemed very bored and very aloof and like they're just gonna march through and move on to the championship game a week later or whatever it was a week and a half later. And of course, Ohio State bushwhacked, ambushed. It's a bushwhack. That's from old brother, where art thou? <laughs> so there is something to be said for being a defending champion type team that's favored versus a team with a chip on its shoulder that's been exacerbated by a loss to your greatest rival. And it's it's gotta be helping Ohio State. Two days, fellas, two days, folks. Uh, two days until the, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl at the College Football Playoff semifinal. Full coverage of that at LettermanRoad.com. As we wrap up another day of full coverage, we will have more of it uh, all day and all week. LettermanRoad.com, Letterman Lounge message board. Come hang out with us, $10 until next August. That's a steal. If you're, if you're into New Year's gifts, I think there's no better gift than the gift of Letterman Row. Tim May will be in Mercedes-Benz Stadium on Saturday night, as will Andy Baxter. I got to well, get my wife something for New Year's too now. Yeah, I'm glad you reminded me. That $10, LettermanRoad.com, Tim. I think that's going to be a great. Well, I, I could really tell you a story about a subscription we're not renewing. Uh, but no, I will save that for another uh, podcast. Maybe we'll talk about that when we get into the quarterback competition in mid-January, like yeah. you wanted to talk about today. No, uh, I did not want to talk about. It. I said, <laughs> Devin just, Brand. It was really funny because they, they've been schooled on this is the game that matters. You understand? What oh I'm yeah, saying. and and they're right. I mean, like Justin Fry. I mean, he wants to put his best five out there on Saturday. The best five offensive linemen. That's why you're asking these questions because. You know, of course, they're not going to tell you the real answer you're looking for, but you could still ask, right? And like Larry Johnson sitting there, so-called the goat of defensive line coaches. All you're hearing all for three weeks now is you're going against the best defensive front in the country. And, it, and they're not talking about Ohio State, they're talking about Georgia's. Yep. So everybody's got something to prove in this game. We have something to prove uh, as we march into Mercedes-Benz Stadium trying to provide the best possible coverage of Ohio State that we can. Hopefully we're doing just that. Uh, but again, that's Andy Baxter that's Tim May. Thank you for, to Buyers Auto for sponsoring the playoff drive, the Buyers Auto playoff drive. We will be back on Friday with a playoff drive video and bold predictions. Don't miss those two things. We might even have a little bit of a video on Saturday leading up to Ohio State versus Georgia, number one versus number four in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Tim, Andy, Spencer, Buyers Auto playoff drive. We'll, we'll see you on Friday back in the Peach Tree for another video for LettermanRow.com.